Alan Zweibel was one of the original writers for Saturday Night Live when it premiered in 1975, and now he's getting ready for a virtual visit to the JCC here in Rochester, and he joins us, dare I say it, live from New York. Welcome, Alan. We're so, so great to meet you. I'm going down the list of people you've worked with. Martin Short, Rodney Dangerfield, The Gary Shandling Show, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Dave Barry, and about a thousand others. So quickly, can you think of a funny person you have not worked with, maybe would like to? Moses. Who's that? Moses. Moses. from the Old Testament, yeah. 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 <laughs> and you weren't around, right? You didn't cross paths. No, no, no. Our paths never crossed. We came close a couple of times. <laughs> now it didn't work out. Alan's new book is Laugh Lines, My Life Helping Funny People Be Funnier. You wrote in the book early on, in the part about the 40th anniversary of Saturday Night Live, the big party they had, comedy writers learn early on that we have a high degree of anonymity. Our words are spoken publicly by others who often have famous faces. Did you ever wish, and I know you've been on Letterman, I've seen your face before, but did you ever wish your face was more famous? No, not really. I know that sounds odd because a lot of comedy writers do harbor that uh, sort of uh, wish or regret or whatever you want to call it. I just like the process of writing enough where I sit down and try to figure out what order to put my words in and put it to other people's mouths or put it on a page. And, um, you know, I... I get a little bit of uh, recognition by being on shows like this. You know, <laughs> so, um, if this makes anybody in, uh, I can't even walk around Rochester, can I right now? But when I can, I will, and uh, people will recognize me. Billy Crystal, you talked about writing jokes. Billy Crystal said you were very precise in your choice of words, your choice of language. You would hone it even down to the number of dots, dot, dot, dot you would put in between phrases. Was that to help the timing of the delivery for some of the comics you were writing for? That's exactly right. What you do when you're writing for other people, you try to capture their voices, actually get inside their head. What does their voice sound like? Um, and give them a hint as to not only the syntax of it, but the timing. So if there is a dot, 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 that's the implication that, okay, a little pause here. I have a friend of mine who's in comedy, and, and he uh, sent me via Facebook. He was jealous that I was going to get to talk to you today because he wanted to, so I promised I would read his question to you. Uh, and it's a Gilda <laughs> Radner-related question, but he wants to know about, uh, was Roseanne Rosanna Dana based on someone that you or and or Gilda Radner knew? No, it wasn't. Um, the name was a little bit... Um, was. You know, it was inspired by, there was a local newscaster here in New York back in the 70s. Sure. Roseanne Scamordella. We were not doing a parody of her, <laughs> but when we mentioned Roseanne Scamordella to Gilda, when we were trying to formulate this new character, she said, Queen Nima, Roseanne, Rosanna Dana. If you remember back in the 60s, there was a song uh, called The Name Game. Yep. You know, you put a name like Johnny, Johnny, Bobani, Banana Fat. If you put Roseanne in there, like the 12th <laughs> verse of it, Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana's name came out. Why Gilda knew that off the top of her head, um, I don't know. But that's how the name came about. And I'm sure you'll be talking more about your relationship with Gilda, a long platonic relationship as, as you talked about it. Um, Larry David, uh, praising your book, says, I love this book, and it's not just because Alan uh, says nice things about me. Well, maybe it is. If you're getting praise from Larry David, do you immediately get um, maybe a, a question whether it's sincere or not? No. Larry's um, one of my best friends, has been one of my best friends since, I guess we met in 1974. Wow. He, Billy Crystal, and I started at the clubs here in New York about the same week. So we're, the three of us are good pals. And so when I go to Larry for something like that, I know him well enough that if he didn't like it or he felt uncomfortable, he's not shy. He so, would tell you. I never doubted it for a second. You started writing for Catskill comedians who were a lot older than you, and then you made all of a sudden your cutting edge as, as one of the first gang of writers at Saturday Night Live. Was that a tough transition to go from writing for the Catskill guys to, to writing for people who were perhaps your age? Yeah, there was a culture shock there, absolutely. I was 21 and writing for guys who were 45 and 50 years old up in the Catskill Mountains. And when I point, I'm pointing north towards the Catskills, just so your audience knows why I'm doing that. <laughs> uh, that's a voluntary move, okay? That's north. <laughs> and, um, 
when I got to SNL, they were all my age. We were all uh, early or mid twenties, and the subject matter was, um, you know, uh, you know, Nixon resigning, um, the Vietnam War. So it was more my sensibility. However, I had never written sketches before. John Belushi and Gilder and Dan Aykroyd, they were all, Lorraine Newman, they were all improv players. So I had never seen this kind of comedy before where they just get up and create characters and scenes right in front of you, sure. as opposed to the joke tellers that I told, that I wrote for up at the Catskill Mountains. So there was a period of adjustment, yes. And I was gonna ask, did your jokes then work into the sketches or did you write the entire sketch? I know you wrote. Um, I know you wrote jokes for Weekend Update, but it was more than that, correct? Well, it was more than that. Yeah, well, the very, very first Weekend Update had my very, very first joke that was ever on television. Chevy delivered it, but once again, those were jokes. You're absolutely right. When there's a sketch, people don't talk in terms of jokes with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Sure. There's a conversation. There's a dialogue, and you insert funny things for them to say. So. Jokes, per se, would have stood out like sore thumbs. It wouldn't have been uh, honest. The first joke, I believe, and I'm not sure we can say it on television, was about a stamp. Well, you did in 1975, so I guess you can. It was about a stamp, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> am I allowed to say it? It's 45 sure. later. Is the statute of limitations? Has that expired? I had written a joke saying, this is how long ago it was, saying that the post office was about to issue a stamp commemorating prostitution in the United States. The 10 cent stamp, you want to lick it, it's a quarter. I can't believe I asked you to tell that joke, but then I thought, if it's been that long since it was first on TV, we can get away with it, I think. Times have changed. Well, they, not only have they changed, you know how much they've changed. When I do speaking engagements all over the country and I tell my story, when I get up to that part where I tell that joke, if I do that, uh, if the speech is at a college, let's say, <laughs> where there are 19 and 20 year old kids, Often somebody would say to me, why would you want to lick a stamp? You know, <laughs> They've never done and, that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and they don't know what a stamp joke is. Antiquated. Maybe they don't even know what a stamp is. Listen, Alan Zweibel, it has been an honor to meet you and talk to you a little bit about what you're going to do for the JCC coming up on the 21st. Uh, wish you were coming to Rochester, and we hope you will soon. Thanks so much I, for joining us. I hope us. I can come there soon. I hope this whole thing lives. I love going to Rochester. And my friend Andrea Miller said that for more information, people should just uh, go to the link uh, rochesterjcc.org yep. about the event. And it'll all be via Facebook Live. Thank you so much. Yeah, JCC is the place to go to get more information about Alan's appearance. And uh, we welcome you to town whenever you can get here. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Zweibel. a million. I love Rochester. All Thanks right. for having me. And he was live from New York.